Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. In today's video, I want to look at mastering composition. Now, I'm sure you've watched lots of videos before on this topic, but what I want to raise with you today is the relationship between art and craft. Understanding that there are many technical things we need to be thinking about or should be aware of at least while we're composing images, but not to let that get in the way of the actual creative and artistic process of making interesting and engaging compositions. So we're going to dive straight into DxO Labs Photo Lab 8, which is my uh, current uh, software that I use for processing my raw files. And I'm going to look at a scene that I made back in 2018. Now, 2018 is six years ago at the time of recording, and a lot has changed in my mind since then. So it's interesting for me to go back and look at the composition I made then understand where my brain was and what I was thinking about and trying to fine tune things today so that I get the absolute best out of this raw file or series of raw files. If we dive straight into the grid view here, you will see I've selected six images. Now five of those are raw files and one of them is the end product or the thing I'm going to talk about at the end of this video, which hopefully is going to pull the whole concept together so that you understand how I've got to that point and the evolution of my thinking and the composition as we go through. This image was taken while I was running a workshop and quite often when I'm on workshops I will make photographs partially because it's a great way for me to explain to students what I'm seeing and how to express different concepts uh, but secondly I do have a lot of time on my hands. So this is the first composition I had made and uh, what I initially liked about this scene was this little cleft of uh, the rock here where it creates this kind of geometric interest. Regular viewers to the channel will know that I speak about geometry quite a lot as one of the five triggers of engagement. And you will see here we do have quite a nice uh, geometric shape here and the shape of the uh, where the sea is meeting the land is also quite exciting. However, there are some things about this composition that I clearly didn't like because this is not the only photograph I made. This is a starting point. Uh, I'm not massively convinced about how the sand runs through the back of this section here and I also feel that this vertical uh, between the cleft and the beach there is creating quite a static relationship. There are real lines and there are implied lines. This is an implied connection and I think it's just a little bit too vertical. This was the second iteration of the scene and as you can see it is a lot more concise. I've got rid of the cleft on the left hand side favouring instead this sort of promontory and I do like this composition partially because it's created a more dynamic angle between the foreground and the midground and then to the background. We've created this kind of zigzag. I think this is a really important point is that there has to be a sense of movement through the frame. When I say has to be in an expressive photography sense, what that means is that it's going to create more energy. Photographs that are engaging and dynamic tend to have this flow working through the frame. But I wasn't satisfied with this and if we look at the next version, you'll see I've got rid of that little bit of sand in the foreground, creating a much cleaner foreground and that has made the relationship between the foreground and the midground a little bit more simple, a little bit cleaner, and I prefer it. Now these are just raw files, they haven't been worked, so you're seeing what came straight out of the camera here. Finally, I moved on to this horizontal version, and I do like this horizontal version. I've gone back to the cleft, I have eliminated some of the sand from uh, the foreground so that I've just got this little light pat patch in the front, which I think really helps to emphasize the shape of that uh, gap in the rocks. That is where contrast comes into play. We're definitely getting more contrast between the, the cleft and the sand, which is showing its shape better. So we have a nice, actually quite silhouetted foreground against the combination of the sand and the river flowing out to the sea there. But what you will notice, and if I compare, if I use this image as the 
the reference image and go to split screen view, you will notice that if I zoom in here, the one on the left here has the foreground sharp and the next one has the foreground out of focus, but it has a sharp back. So what this is showing me here is that I had an awareness of the limitations of depth of field. This image was taken with a 50mm prime on a Nikon D850 and I was definitely aware of the limitations of depth of field that I had with this lens. The fact that this is focus stacked is telling me that what are the things that we have to be aware of when we're composing. So there is of course the arrangement of content within the frame, the actual composition itself. But as we know in photography, that's only part of the process. We have to think about depth of field and we have to think about shutter speed and we have to think about our ISO. So we have to have our exposure, which is the technical definition of really getting data onto the sensor. And we have to think about the aesthetics. So the depth of field is a function of the lens and the focal length and the shutter speed is giving us the amount of energy we need. I've gone for a 20 second exposure here to try and simplify some of this water. I didn't want waves, I didn't want lots of detail. There's already quite a lot of busyness in this foreground with the beautiful seaweed there uh, and I did like the simplicity of this point. I didn't want to add wave crests that a short shutter speed would raise. So if I look at these two images now, we know that we have to focus stack this. I have jumped ahead now and I have done the focus stack in Photoshop. I exported both of these images straight out of DxO into Photoshop and did the focus stacking and I did the manual blending of the two exposures. And what I have now on the right hand side is the best of both worlds. I have a nice sharp background and a nice sharp foreground. This is the full three to two aspect ratio frame. So I've now got what I consider to be the final composition and the final uh, focus stacked version. Composition doesn't stop with the full frame. We can definitely approach uh, coming up with variations of this. And when I start to look at this frame, if I put on the crop tool, make it a little smaller in the frame. If I put on the crop tool, we can start to see that there are areas within this frame that jump out as being more important than other parts of this frame. And I think what I decided to do with this was to turn it into a square and simplify the composition down so that I've lost some of the distracting elements on the left hand side, I've lost some of the distracting elements on the right hand side, and I'm now allowing the viewer to focus in 100% on the things I thought were important, which is the beautiful color of the seaweed, which is being shown because it's low tide. This dynamic foreground element, which is geometry and contrast and luminosity, it's drawing the viewer into this foreground part of the frame. And then I'm including this sandbar, which in itself is a triangle, which is at a slight uh, angle from the foreground, allowing a bit of a dynamic flow into the scene. And then finally, the little headland up there in the dark in the corner, providing a bit of depth and also giving a bit of a destination for the wandering mind. I hope in this short video that you've got an essence of what expressive photography means, which is to understand that there are both technical and artistic decisions or uh, outputs and inputs that we can move into our photography to create better photographs. This is what expressive photography is all about, is to try and become better photographers and walking hand in hand with me hopefully becoming a better person and hopefully that's inspiring to you also. Uh, 
I hope you've enjoyed this content. I hope you find it educational. And if so, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already doing so. Give me a thumbs up, dive into the comments. Is this of value to you? Have you learned something today? Is this going to help you moving forward? I do very much hope so. Uh, apart from that, uh, do jump onto the Expressive Photography website. Uh, we are always bringing up new workshop opportunities or maybe dive into our educational store to look at our ebooks and videos that are available there. Uh, hopefully you might find something of your interest to you. Apart from that, I look forward to bringing more content to you next week here on the Alistair Ben Expressive Photography channel. And thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.